I'll do a little review on this Yard Max 25 ton hydraulic log splitter. Uh, I've been using it a bit and you know, got some decent impressions of it. Um, I was excited when I got it in the crate. I ordered this off Wood Splitter Direct. And, uh, you know, so I threw it together. Everything was all hooked up, came with hydraulic fluid. Made it a little interesting with that full beam. You had to kind of get that balanced and stuff. And I had them unload it on the back of that trailer. And you definitely want to move the crate off the trailer. That would have made things easier. You know, and if you have the option, you know, use a hoist helps too. Even if you're not picking it all the way up, it would just help to not have that great big heavy beam balanced while you're wiggling stuff around it. But <clears throat> all in all, you know, the I really like the splitter. Um, so you got your normal detent valve with the auto return. Um, I really like this wedge. It's profiled with uh, a little bit narrower. A lot of the other ones just come in like that and I like having that solid steel weldable insert. I suppose a person can sharpen that if they want but uh, if something ever happened you could also replace that which is nice. Uh, I don't think it'll be necessary but it's nice. Uh, little feature you got these in case the wood gets stuck knock it back off um, has an interesting feature here you got this which these are nice and tall so they prevent the wood from coming loose once you're splitting it I have seen wood kick out on splitters it's usually a user error about having it in at an angle um, this thing rotates and I'm not sure I understand what they're attempting to do there, but these are wide enough the wood never really sticks on them. And I've never really used the rotating feature on it, um, but it rattles. If you don't have pressure on it, that rattles. It drives me up the wall. So I'll give it a little longer, and uh, you know, if I'm sure I'm not using it, I will probably pull it out clean up some of this paint and weld it in place and just pull that pin out I think that would work better for me and it did come with a four-way wedge I took it off um, I didn't find it overly useful but I've always wanted to try one and, and we'll see if you got into the just the right wood I'll probably put it back on a uh, smaller diameter pop it and four be done but <coughs> This wood that I'm working on right now is pretty big. You know, it's uh, four to six foot rounds. You know, so it, it leaves some pretty big chunks. Um, now this one will split horizontal and vertical. We'll walk around here to the other side. Just uh, pull that pin and dip it up. Now your pins are nice and good size. You know, that's pin there which you know it has to be a good size uh, but it seems to be real well built you know it has a two inch trailer ball the other thing that I like is instead of having to like pull a keeper pin out and stuff that's just spring loaded for the trailer jack so you pull that and kick that back the uh, these little wings on the side they're not really tables you can buy a table or I might make one that goes a little wider because I have found myself liking to split in this orientation quite a bit more but if you look there's another another hole right beside there so if you loosen that up take that bolt out you can tip this up at an angle and I might try that because it'll keep stuff from trying to roll off um, the motor has a couple features I like. <laughs> you know, obviously, on off switch right there. I thought it was an odd location, but whether you're horizontal or vertical, it's pretty reachable, which is nice. Um, the two other things that I haven't seen on other splitters I've used that I really like is this has a fuel shutoff 
that's your choke but it has a built-in fuel shut off and throttle adjustment you can throttle it up and down so if you're going to be splitting some wood or you got to wrestle around with something you can just throttle it down to an idle you know and then idle it back up when you're ready to use it it's a Briggs and Stratton CR 950 208 cc I haven't actually looked up the horsepower on it I'm guessing it's somewhere in between a 5.5 and a 6 um, you know it does advertise 9.5 foot pounds of torque at 2600 rpms it seems to get the job done um, the other thing I liked about this log splitter is a hydraulic pump it has a, oh I don't remember the spec off the top of my head but it has a higher gallon per minute flow rate than uh, other splitters in this size which means it cycles faster which is nice and uh, I'd like to see if I could find some more specs on that hydraulic pump because the other thing I notice is there you know it's a two-stage pump I assume I need to actually look that up but uh, most hydraulic log splitters are and you know if they say oh you got 11 gallons a minute then you'll have like eight gallons per minute at you know some lower PSI and then you'll have three gallons per minute at a higher PSI that actually gives you your your power to split so when you actually hit something hard it slows way way down well this one slows down a little bit but it bogs the motor down which I haven't seen before and it doesn't slow down nearly like what other hydraulic log splitters do you know so I'm uh, guessing that there's a much higher ratio of the gallon per minute rate on your higher PSI which makes it nice it just ultimately splits faster you know and this total unit I think with shipping was around a thousand dollars so you know I've been quite pleased with it and, you know 25 ton but the thing is is when you look into these you know obviously you kick up the 35 ton it's different but like your 24 26 ton even some of your 28s I've looked at they have the same size hydraulic cylinder so the only way you're getting more splitting force is with getting a higher PSI out of your pump which a lot of the components are all rated about the same so you know it's like finding the right pump that you know they did something to it and got slightly higher PSI even though it doesn't effectively process at that you know so in my opinion 24 to 26 tons all going to be the same splitting amount so and I've had in the past it was many years ago but I had a 37 ton and quite frankly I found that these 26 are just as good for the wood we have here and that may be something different if you have oak or something to that effect you know here splitting like the dug fir and the hemlock and alder and maple and stuff what I found is that you know your your mid 20s split it just fine and if you get something that these are struggling with it's usually a great big knot and even you know you, you bump it up and it doesn't split it it just smashes it and ruins a piece of wood so my opinion you're just better off tossing that one off to the side and chainsawing it in half you know there's no point in fighting and fighting and fighting with it you know it's either one's going to smash them up and you know it all depends on what you have for wood you know I we don't have hardly any of your the oaks and stuff here and maybe that's something different but you know this is this is what we have and that's what I've found with them so I will get this set up and start doing a little more splitting while it's nice and cool get out here six o'clock in the morning or so and you know get the splitting done before it's 90 plus
some of this down a little more so it's easier to handle and process through the splinter. Come on over here and check out this knob. This should be fun when we get to it. That might be a fun piece to uh, try. We'll give her a try and see how the splitter does. We'll probably throw it off on the side and either go in the burn pile or chainsaw it. So, well, now when splitting this, so we want to get that out and try and split it like that. Like right there, it's going to cross it. So we want to split it out and come off the center and come back. So we'll probably split it, try and split it right in here to split that big knot in its own piece. over and give the true temper a go. Couple of knots on that one. 